Welcome back. You're listening to Houston Real Estate Radio. Last segment, we were talking with uh, Rob Mormon, who is uh, going to be the 2017 president of the Houston chapter of the Appraisal Institute, and also Carl Hall from Register Real Estate Advisors. He's a realtor here. And we were talking a lot about appraisals. Uh, I want to I want to go back to something we were talking about. How can realtors help with the appraisal process? Um, I want to just briefly talk about that. You talked a little bit, Rob, about some of the things that a realtor can do to make the appraisal process a little bit smoother, uh, a little bit make sure that it's a, that you support and help the appraiser kind of get their job done right. um, on a property, whether it's a residential or commercial property. Some of the things that you uh, touched on is providing comps, um, maybe comps that aren't even readily available in the MLS, a for sale by owner, that kind of thing. Um, has it sold in the last few years? Right. Has the property sold in the last few years? Any deed restrictions or um, amenities in the community, things that make the property more valuable? Um, we uh, we were also talking at the break about um, previous appraisals, because a lot of times a consumer will have a previous appraisal from a refinancing, just because interest rates have been so low, they've done a refinance. So you said having that appraisal appraiser, appraisal handy <laughs> to give to the appraiser is, is a good thing. It is. So. I mean, it, it they still have to do the work. They still have to measure. They still have to do, look at the house. They still yeah. have to do all the legwork. But, mm-hmm. but it, it is nice sometimes to just have point of reference it was there before also um a list of upgrades or capital improvements to the home that's important right i mean because the appraiser will look on the uh, hcat or whatever the uh, appraisal district the house is in Mm -hmm. and they'll see what it says but uh, they're not always up to date with what they have in there so it helps it definitely helps um, appraisers have access to the MLS, the same inf- MLS information that realtors have access to. They should. They should. If they subscribe to it, yes. Um, but they're not required to subscribe to it, right? No, they're not. They're kind of, in- I mean, they're independent contractors, just like a realtor. So if, it, like we were talking about earlier, if they, they choose not to have designations, they choose not to have a super key, and they choose not to have MLS access, how can they provide a good appraisal? That's a good question. That's a real good question. Uh, you know, the, the, the you were talking about some of the other appra- the appraisers here in Houston that have everything. They make sure that they have up to date information. They make sure that they have access. They make sure that they are up to date with education and with new methods yeah. and what have you. Yeah. And those are the ones you want. Yeah. Those that's are the ones exactly that are who on you top. Want. Yeah. I've I've literally had an appraiser call me before and say, Hey, can you can you scan the comps to me? Oh wow. Because they didn't have access. <laughs> I'm like, how can that's, you, you that's can't amazing. do your job. Yeah, <laughs> okay, so big debate among realtors. Little sidebar here. Carl knows about this. This is a big <laughs> debate among realtors. Should a uh, should an appraiser have a, a a realtor super key to access the lot box, or is it okay for them to call the realtor and say, "Hey, can you come and let me into this listing?" It depends on the volume they do. Uh, I think if if I were still doing it, I'd have one just because then you don't have to go to through a broker. Then you can set your own schedule better. You're not dependent on someone else. I don't know how much extra a super key costs, but uh, thirteen dollars a month. Thirteen a month. Wow. (laughs) If they can't afford that, they really don't need to be in business. Right. (laughs) Yeah. That's not much, is it? (laughs) One of the issues that we were having, and I don't see this very often anymore, but I know in in years past, one of the issues um, was that we would see appraisers who live in Sugarland coming up to the woodlands to do an appraisal, you know, and just they, they just weren't familiar with the neighborhood or the community that they were appraising in. Are you seeing less of that now? Well, you hope. Um, the The problem is, is a way that the uh, appraisal management software goes. Uh, it depends upon what the appraiser puts in it as far as the zip codes that they serve. Mm-hmm. Someone from Pasadena can put in the Sugarland or the uh, Spring or the okay. Tomball zip codes. Yeah. And so they're going to get bids from those areas. Okay. And what USPAP says is that if you accept an assignment, you're holding yourself out as being experientially, educationally, professional, and geographically mm-hmm. competent. Okay. So if they're they're saying that, yeah. and and a lot of times they aren't, but they're saying they are, and that's really about all you can do. Um, what are some of the current appraisal issues that you're seeing in the market right now? Uh, the problem with the shifting market, uh, you know. Uh, 
Houston was booming. Mm -hmm. The whole Houston area was booming like crazy. And properties were on the market four days. And if your property was on the market longer than four days, it was time to worry. And an imbalance market has always been three to six months. So you're seeing that three to six months coming back and you're seeing values not increase as rapidly as they did. Mm -hmm. So an expectation that, okay, I bought this in 2012 for $100,000, it should be worth 150 now in 2016 and it just may not be. Right. So we're not me. Yeah. The market isn't meeting a lot of expectations that, that buyers and sellers have. And that's, that's the biggest problem. Are you seeing any issues with new construction appraising? Not really. Okay. Um, you know, there's still a, a, a demand uh, for new construction. I mean, the, uh, I think the lot supply in the Houston market is still um, to where it's an advantage to the, uh, to the seller that mm -hmm. they still have. It's a short supply. It's not as much as it was. Certainly not like Class A apartments where you have way too many of those. But yeah. buildable lots are still in demand. You can, uh, consumers can, you know, we talked about the need for, that a lender has to use an appraiser to make sure that the, the property is going to hold value when, when the lender loans money on it. But a, a regular, any, any consumer can get an appraiser on a property, um, one, just to kind of figure out what it's worth, what right. the value is, uh, especially if it's, if it's hard to comp something outside of a neighborhood, difficult property to comp, a unique custom built home kind of thing. Also, um, you also help um, with litigation support. Yes, yeah, they do. Um, I did that quite a bit when I was doing fee work. And it's, um, you know, a lot of appraisers don't like it because they don't like getting on a witness stand, but my dad was a lawyer, so I've, you know, I was raised by wolves. You've endured it. You know what to do. <laughs> I've, been, I've been getting cross-examined all my life. <laughs> so, so it wasn't that scary to me. But it uh, Guilty it, as charged. Yeah. It, it's, it's, more, it's more intense because yeah. you, you're, number one, you're typically getting paid by the hour. So you do a whole lot more thorough job. And the expectation is higher on that end than it is on residential. Um, Residential is fast. It's mm -hmm. just a fast moving market. They want appraisals done. Uh, the report, report in within a week is usually the typical turn time, and even better to have it faster than that. Yeah. Which um, sometimes you just can't. Like this rain has played havoc with a yeah. lot of guys. Yeah. And, uh, and they were already behind because the market's been really hot this summer for mm -hmm. residential all over the state. It's been amazing. So with new construction, um, we have seen that green features have played a big part in um, helping keep consumers' utility bills down. Mm -hmm. And as a as a, a piece of that, a selling tool for realtors to use is that, hey, you're going to have such low utility bills for the next 10 years of home ownership, you can actually afford to pay more for this house because right. you could buy an older home and you're going to spend more, you know, over right. the life of the loan on this house, you know, because of the utilities. Do you think that utilities will start to play a role in appraisals? Oh, I definitely do. Uh, the Institute has education for both commercial and residential appraisers about how to consider the green aspect of new construction in mm -hmm. their appraisal reports, because it is, it, like you say, it, it is an added feature. Um, yeah. It isn't always, uh, you can't always say you're going to get your money back. Uh, the extra that it costs makes it worth that in the market today. I think it depends upon the property type and the market, uh, but it's definitely an advantage. And like I said, there is education in that area and it's growing. It's a growing area. And we talked briefly about what a consumer can do if their appraisal comes in low, if it doesn't meet value. Um, the, the key point I think that you made is that you have to have some new or different information right. and something that the appraiser did not take into consideration or they used wrong, wrong information. They used the wrong square footage. We see that a lot. And what I've been told, I don't know how many times, is that if it's within 500 square feet, it's okay. What's your take on that? I think 500 that, square feet's a lot. That's a lot. I mean, that can be, you know, that can be the difference in $15,000 yes, or more. Can. You it know, can. I just, I remember one time I rounded down 
on an appraisal report and got a call f- from the borrower, which they shouldn't do, but he did. And he, and he asked me, and I said, well, you know, it was just, I rounded down, it was insignificant. He said, do you have $10,000 in your pocket right now? I said, no. And he went, well, think about that next time you round down about how insignificant $10,000 is. And I've you remembered that every then. time, every time. <laughs> yeah, sounds like you thought about that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Never forgotten that conversation. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I, I would send the, le- the appraiser back out and get a revised report if they were 500 square feet off. Okay, so ask for a revised report. But the realtor or the consumer can't ask the appraiser for that. They have to ask the lender to ask the appraiser to do that, That's right? That's right. That's right. Okay, and then the other thing on, if they're going to go through the dispute process, ask the lender to send them like directions on the, the dispute process and exactly. who to go to and what to do. What they need, I mean, just saying, well, the value's too low, that's that's yeah. not gonna work. But if you can say, they didn't use this comp, this house is more comparable than this one that they did use. Right, they didn't They didn't consider my pool, they didn't consider my hot tub, mm-hmm. they even you know left out one of the bedrooms. I mean, appraisers are human, they'll make mistakes. And it, if, you, if you, they've made a mistake, they're quick to correct them, typically. Mm-hmm. They don't, most appraisers I know are, are, they don't think themselves as perfect and they're willing to make corrections when they're warranted. All right, and the Appraisal Institute has a website, uh, appraisalinstitute.com? Yes, right. And the appraisalinstitute.com, some of the consumer information available on that website is that you can find someone to help you in a litigation issue or find an appraiser and look at those designations. That's right. <laughs> you can find an appraiser in your area, it's your zip code, or, or and it does different things like i said there's condemnation lists there's litigation lists there's fha lists there's all mm-hmm. all kind of lists on that website it, a lot of consumer information on appraisalinstitute.org i wish there was a list out there that showed okay all the different lenders uh, all the different banks all the different mortgage brokers everywhere you can go to get a loan and who they use for appraisers oh yeah wouldn't well. that be nice you could really look behind the curtain and go i don't want to use that lender because they don't use quality appraisers yeah that would that would be interesting <laughs> because they're you know some of them use a third party service that don't pick a good pool of right some appraisers. third party services are great but you don't know you yeah. just you just don't know which one you're getting all right. Well, great information. I appreciate it. Uh, Rob Mormon, we appreciate you driving in today you. and giving us some great information. And Carl Hall, always a blast to have on the show. <laughs> we appreciate you. And if you've got a real estate question, give us a call, 844-788-9444. And if you missed any of today's show, you can catch it online at HoustonRealEstateRadio.com. We'll have the videos up for you on HoustonRealEstateRadio.com. And if you've, uh, we, you know, we've been on the air for over four years now, so all those shows are archived out there. Lots of great information. Uh, today's show is a uh, we put out some great appraisal information, but you can find pretty much anything on buying or selling property over Houston. Imagine you and your family return from a tropical vacation to find that one of your pipes burst, flooding your entire house. Are you fully covered? Will you only receive $100 for your TV that cost you $2,000 just two years ago? Will your insurance company pay for you to live in a hotel while your home is being repaired? What if on that same trip, you lose your wedding ring? Will your home insurance coverage replace that as well? All insurance policies are not created equal. If you don't know the answer to these questions, you're not alone. Most people don't understand the gaps in their coverage until it's too late. Call Goosehead Insurance today and let one of our agents review your current policy to ensure that you are fully covered. At Goosehead Insurance, we understand the power of choice. Instead of working for a single insurance company, our agents have access to over 20 A-rated carriers. This allows us to craft a policy to fit your particular lifestyle, budget, and needs. It also enables us to reshop your policy in the future, if necessary, saving you time and money. No need to look for another agent. At Goosehead, we've got you covered. Our agents will walk you through each policy decision so that you have the coverage you need. If that's not reason enough, talk to one of our happy clients. Our client satisfaction scores are three times the industry average. 
To experience the Goosehead insurance difference, visit us online at goosehead.com or call us at 800-474-1377.